Hey friends, Water Program Coordinator Emily Heald here, back for another Discover at Home short little videos that we're doing to teach you about uh, little snippets into uh, general environmental topics. And today we are going to talk about lakes. We're going to talk about the different layers that lakes have, um, how those layers change over the season, things like that. It's a process called stratification. And um, oh, what's that? Oh, you've heard of stratification before. Okay, yeah, yeah. And oh, you're especially interested in how it relates to nutrient cycling and oxygen availability? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are important topics. They really affect the lake. We can do that. And uh, we'll definitely talk about that. And oh, what? What's that? Oh, you're interested in upcoming Discovery Center programs? Have you checked out the website? Yeah, it's just discoverycenter.net. Yeah, net, not com, dot net. Yeah. And all the programs are listed on there, so you can register online or give us a call, and we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I know. All right, let's talk about lake stratification. All right, so something that you have to know about stratification right off the bat is that I can't show you a lake and show you stratification occurring or stratification, the layers eroding in a lake. Um, even if we were to dive down into the lake with scuba gear and snorkel gear and all that, we can't really show you it. So I'm going to do a lot of diagrams and a lot of talking, so bear with me. It's an interesting topic. It just gets a little sciency. All right, so when we talk about lake stratification, the easiest way to go about talking about it is that we're going to go season by season. So we're going to start, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall, and then go back to winter. And so we're going to do that. We're going to go through the seasons, but let's first start, uh, let's back up a little bit and define what is stratification. So what are we even talking about in the first place? So when we say the word stratification, what we're referring to are layers. So layers within the lake from the surface of the lake all the way down to the bottom. That's what we're talking about. So we're going top to bottom within the lake. So another concept that I need to make sure you're all familiar with before we move on is the concept of density. So density is a measure of mass per unit volume. And I know that sounds kind of complex, but I promise you, you're probably familiar with it and you don't even realize it. And so think about um, oil and water. If you mix oil and water, they separate, right? So the oil will float on top of the water because it's less dense than water. Water is more dense than that oil, so it sinks down to the bottom, okay? You could also think of something, and I have an example here. This is glycerin in water, and I dyed the glycerin blue. So these are together in the same container, and you can see the glycerin is sitting on the bottom of this container, and the water is on top of it because that glycerin is more dense than the water, right? Remember that. So that concept of density, that can depend on different materials. Like we just looked at glycerin in water, we talked about oil in water, but density can also vary within a specific material. And what we're gonna talk about today is how density can vary in water. So water, when it's warmer, it is less dense than cold water. So warmer water, in this example, could be the clear water in here, and cold water would be the example of the more dense glycerin, right? So water can have different densities depending on the temperature. Warm water, less dense. Cold water, more dense. All right, we're gonna go through this seasonally, remember? So we're gonna start with the spring. And in the spring, after the ice melts from the top of the lake, the temperature of the lake is the same throughout, okay? You're just gonna have to trust me on that for now. So because the temperature is the same, that means the density of the water is also the same from top to bottom. So therefore, the lake can mix itself, right? These arrows represent mixing. It's not necessarily going circular. It's going, you know, top and down, up and down, side to side. It's just, you know, freely mixing within itself. We don't have that glycerin water situation. It's not like oil and water. We don't have different densities. So everything can mix within itself. And that's important because when the lake is mixing throughout the entire thing, you can bring oxygen from the surface of the lake down to the bottom, and the oxygen can mix throughout the entire lake. If you have any uh, yummy little nutrients sitting in the sediment, you can bring those from the bottom to the top. So everything's mixing and, uh, and being real friendly. So that mixing that's occurring in the spring, that's primarily wind driven. So as the wind is moving across the surface of the lake, that's what's causing the lake to mix itself. So as we get into the summer, remember we have temperatures starting to rise, the sun is getting more intense, 
and then that starts to warm this upper layer of water. So remember in this situation that we have here, our warmer water is less dense than cold water, okay? So we have warmer water here with red and then colder water below in the blue, okay? So this is where we're starting to create these density differences that are becoming really important. So this is our oil and water situation here. We have uh, warmer, less dense water floating on top of the cooler, more dense water. So what we've created here with these density differences is two distinct layers of water that are not mixing with themselves, okay? So this top warmer layer of water, this can still, mi still mix on that top layer because it's still exposed to that wind and wave action, but this colder layer is essentially sealed off from that top layer. I bet you that you knew this concept and you didn't even know it. So think about the last time that you jumped into a lake over the summer, that warm top water layer, that's relatively warm. And then as you dive deeper down into the water, it's really cold water at the bottom of the lake, right? That's stratification. All right, so this stratification, the sealing off or the difference between these two layers is important for the goings on in the lake because this uh, warmer top layer right here this is being constantly replenished with oxygen from the atmosphere above it, right? This uh, air-water interface is, is bringing oxygen down into this layer, but that oxygen is not mixing down into the bottom of the lake. That doesn't mean there's not oxygen down here. We're going to talk about how lake types vary with their oxygen at the bottom, but it just means this one is being constantly replenished, whereas the oxygen down here, it's being sealed off. So when it's used up, it's used up. This is also important in the sense of, remember we talked about a lot of times for lakes, nutrients are in the sediment down here. They're at the bottom of your lake. Those, because we're not mixing with the top, all those nutrients stay within this bottom part of the lake and they're not mixed up in the top part of the lake, okay? So everything up here is no longer getting all the nutrients from the bottom and the bottom is no longer being replenished with oxygen from the air above it. So in the fall, like right now, our air temperatures are cooling down, the sun becomes a little less intense, and therefore that surface layer starts to become cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler until the whole ding dang thing is the same temperature again. So now that we're at the same temperature throughout the lake, we're the same density throughout the lake, which means the lake can mix within itself once again, just like we saw in the spring. A lot of times if you get to know a lake really well, say you live on a lake and you're, you're really in touch with what that lake's doing, a lot of times people can tell when fall overturn is happening because in some lakes, some lakes, fall overturn will come with, or will spark an algae bloom because we're bringing nutrients, remember the nutrients from the bottom of the lake are now being mixed up with the top of the lake so that can fuel algae that need those nutrients to reproduce. So you're bringing more nutrients into the lake, you're feeding the algae, the algae like that, they reproduce. Algae aren't necessarily bad, right? There are some types of bad algae, not all of them are bad, a lot of them are really good for the lake. So sometimes you see an uptick in algae when you see fall overturn. In the winter, once the ice begins to form on the lake, that water right at the surface here, right at the top, is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the temperature that ice, or that uh, water forms ice, right? So that water that's sitting right below that ice, that ice is affecting the water temperature, so it's 32 degrees. And then actually the water below it is slightly warmer. It's usually about 39 degrees. That's the water temperature where water is most dense, is at 39 degrees. That means water is the most dense. So the situation that we see in the winter, it's called inverse stratification because we have water that's slightly colder at the top because of that ice, and then we have slightly warmer water at the bottom. So this isn't mixing as freely as we would see in the spring um, or that top layer in the summer because we don't have the wind and wave action sloshing everything around. But this, this water still can um, kind of like move freely within itself because we have similar densities throughout. So if that's enough science for you for the day, that's totally fine. Click out of this video if you're good knowing, you know, lake mixing, density, you're solid on those concepts. I won't be offended, you can click out now. If you want to get a little bit more sciencey, we're going to do that. All right, so now get this, y'all. There are different types 
of mixing. So not all lakes are in the same mixing schedule like our lakes are. So to start with our type of lakes, our type of lakes are called dimictic lakes. Di meaning two, right? So that means they mix two times per year like we talked about, once in the spring and then once in the fall. So what's the example of that? Most of the lakes that we have here in Wisconsin. There are other types of lakes that are called cold monomictic lakes, meaning they mix one time per year, right? Mono meaning one mixing event per year. So these are lakes that are like mountain lakes, alpine lakes, lakes that are in really high elevation that are covered with ice for a significant portion of the year. So sometimes these lakes might not even stratify at all. The ice melts, it mixes for you know however long there's not ice in that particular location, and then it just ices over again. There's another type of monomictic lake, right? We're mixing one time a year, but now we have warm monomictic lakes. Warm is relative, relative to alpine lakes, right? So these mix one time of year, but they're mixing all winter. So an example of this type of situation, real big lakes, Lake Washington, sometimes Lake Superior. These are lakes that they stratify in the summer, but in the winter, they don't fully ice over. So in the winter, if, as long as they're still exposed to the air above it, they can still do the mingly mangly within themselves. Another type of lake mixing is called polymictic. So you catching on to our naming scheme here. It's not super confusing or anything like that. It's fairly straightforward, right? Poly meaning many, mictic is mixing. So many mixing events throughout the course of a year. So some examples of lakes that do this, um, sometimes if you have lakes that are located on the equator, those are really interesting. Sometimes they stratify during the day and then mix overnight. Another example of this is shallow wind exposed lakes. So we have some of these right here in Wisconsin. So for this one, think State House Lake right here at the Discovery Center. That thing is like 17 feet deep at max, but on average, it's super, super shallow lake and it's oriented north south, so it's rather wind exposed. So that lake, our lake here, it does stratify, it does have those layers, but sometimes on super windy days, those layers can uh, erode and mix within themselves. And then the next day, if it's warm and not windy again, that stratification can set up again. And then finally, the last type of lake mixing we're gonna talk about are lakes that are meromictic, okay? So in meromictic lakes, this is incomplete mixing, usually due to being super deep. So this happens in lakes that are super, super deep. Think Lake Baikal, the deepest lake in the world, that's in Russia parts of Lake Superior will even not mix completely. So in conclusion, lake stratification, lake mixing, if you get into like the nitty gritty details, yeah, it can be kind of confusing, it can be kind of complex, but the core of it, that core concept that we learned today is density differences. So that's really what's driving lake stratification in lake mixing. So I hope that you enjoyed learning about this concept. I think a lot of you were already familiar with it and didn't even know it. And I hope that we were able to break it down for you enough to understand at least a little bit of it. If you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comments and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as possible. And also if you have any other aquatic concepts that you're interested in, leave a comment on that too. Give us some ideas. What are you interested in learning about? So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.